section 5.4, part 1, is all about equations of trig functions, as you can see on the screen. And this is the last section, but we've got two parts, so not quite the last video yet. The purposes for this section are to solve equations involving trig functions. And I think that's it. Yep, that's all we're doing. So it's all going to be just trying to solve questions. Not much more than that. You've seen all the concepts. So a reminder from what we've seen before. If you're given the reference angle and we want to figure out something in a specific quadrant, we've got some set equations. So if I have the reference angle and I am in quadrant one, theta is just the reference angle. If I'm in quadrant two, it's pi minus that reference angle. If I'm in quadrant three, my angle is pi plus the reference angle. And quadrant four is two pi minus the reference angle. So these are our equations if we are in radians. So I think I gave this to you before, but I had it in terms of reference angle instead of in theta. But it's the same equations, just rearranged. Or we could have this written out in terms of degrees. So instead of having pi, we would stick in there 180 degrees, and instead of 2 pi, it would be 360. So these are the two things we could have, depending on if you're given radians or degrees. Depending on what quadrant I'm in, I need to know this equation. So these are very important for you to know, because you're going to use these a lot. And without them, you won't be able to do very well. So they're kind of important. Let's try examples. So my first example is to solve this equation. 4 sine squared x equals 3, and I want to solve it in between 0 and 2 pi. So notice here we're solving for x instead of solving for theta. First things first, we need to isolate sine x. So we take that equation, divide both sides by 4, take the square root, and notice when we take the square root we have a plus or a minus. Again, anytime you square root, you have a plus or a minus. So I need to deal with these two things separately. So I've got two columns here. I'll treat the plus separately from the minus. So sine theta, uh, or sine x, equals the positive root 3 over 2. So first, let's get the reference angle. We just plug in the inverse sine of that value. We get pi over 3. Because this is positive, and we're dealing with sine. Remember, sine deals with the y value. So the y value is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. So using my reference angle and what I showed you on the slide before this, we can go about solving this. So in quadrant 1, x is simply the reference angle, or the reference x, I suppose, in this case, since we're dealing with x's and not theta. And in quadrant two, it is going to be pi minus my reference x. So we get two pi over three. These are my two values for quadrant one and quadrant two. And these are within my range. Since the period of this function is two pi, if I were to add or subtract two pi onto these values, it would be out of the range. So these are the only two answers I've got. We, we can't get any more than that. Let's look at sine x equals negative root 3 over 2. I'm going to show this again. You don't have to show it again when you do it. But I wanted to show you that, again, for reference angles, you always take the positive value. So it's the exact same as what we did for positive root 3 over 2. We get the same reference angle. However, because sine x is negative, now we're dealing with quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. So the process to get the reference angle is the same. We get the same reference angle. We just have different quadrants. Quadrant 3, we're dealing with pi plus this reference x. So that gives us 4 pi over 3. And quadrant 4 is 2 pi minus that reference x, which gives us 5 pi over 3. All of those combined give us our x value. So x is equal to these four values, the four values we figured out from each of those quadrants. Again, I could look for terminal arm or coterminal angles with these, 
But since my range is, or the domain is from 0 to 2 pi, if I'm going to add or subtract 2 pi, it'll just get me out of that domain. So there's no point in even trying that. But you will need to look at that, because sometimes it'll change. Let's do another example here. This time, instead of giving a domain, I'm now looking for a general equation, the general equations for this. So we got 10 equals 6 sine pi over 4x plus 8. Let's do some rearranging to get sine of pi over 4 times x all by itself. First we subtract by 8, then we divide by 6, and we get sine of pi over 4x is equal to 1 third. From here, we want to get our reference angle, our reference x. But notice inside of my sign, I no longer have just x or just theta. Now I've got something else that is in there as well. You've got a b value, or you're going to have a b and a c value, or b and h from the old terminologies. So what we want to do is we want to figure out what is going to be kind of my reference point. I'm no longer going to call it a reference angle, because it's not so much an angle anymore. My reference point. So what I will do is I'm going to do the inverse sine of both sides. So I take the inverse sine of 1 over 3, and we'll get that pi over 4x equals 0 0.3398. Since when we're at the section where it says sine bracket equals 1 over 3, that's positive. Sine being positive correlates to quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. Again, this is something you've seen before. Now, how this is going to look is going to change a little bit from what you've seen before. Instead of it being just, uh, well, let's do quadrant one, because quadrant one is just solving the equation we already have. So we have pi over 4x equals this number, solve for x, and we get x equals 0 0.4327. Okay, that part's pretty straightforward. Now, for quadrant two, what I'm going to do for this is, normally I would go pi minus the angle. Instead of just having an angle, we've got something inside of the bracket. So it's going to be pi minus what was in my brackets for the sine function. So it's pi minus, in the brackets we had pi over 4 times x. So it will be pi minus that value is equal to 0 0.3398. So that's how we're going to adjust into these new quadrants, is we are going to apply it once we have actually solved for or gotten rid of the sine function. Normally we wouldn't do that at this point. So now that I've got this for quadrant 2, let's solve it. Subtract pi from both sides, divide by negative pi over 4, and we get x equals 3.57. Here's our two values. These are going to be the kind of main values for those points. Now we just need to determine what are what's the general terminology for this. So in order to get the general terminology, we need to know what the period is, because that has now changed. It's not 360, because we have a B value. From there, we'll take our values. So we had x equals 0 0.4327. I put it as two decimal places. Again, I'm not going to be super picky about that, but we'll take from quadrant one, the x value we got there, plus or minus the period, because the, and then the period times um, n, just some integer. This is what we got from quadrant one. We also take the one from quadrant two, so just the x value we got there, plus or minus 8n, where n is also an integer. So these are my two general equations for the given equation that we had there with sine of something involving x. So if you were to plug these values in to the original equation, it would solve it. Let's do another one. So general term for this. I did general term again just so we can get some more practice in seeing that. Within the domain, it's not, not as tricky. So first, algebra does get to cosine by itself. So subtract 14, divide by 8. We get a half is equal to cos this number. 
From here, we're going to get, again, the reference point or the reference kind of x value. So we'll do the inverse cosine on both sides. The inverse cos of a half is pi over 3. So this is my reference point. Again, not the reference angle, but a reference point from where we can determine something for each quadrant. So here cosine was positive. Again, cos is x, so that would give us quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So quadrant 1, we just take that equation and solve it. So we have pi over 6x divided by that pi over 6. We get x equals 2. Here we've got some nicer numbers, which is convenient. For quadrant 4, I need to take what was inside of the cosine function, which was pi over 6x, and I now need to treat that as if I'm going to be in quadrant 4. So in quadrant 4, it's 2 pi minus theta. So in this case, it'll be 2 pi minus pi over 6x. And this is equal to my pi over 3. So this will take a little bit of getting used to and a little bit of practice in solving these equations to be comfortable with putting in 2 pi or pi plus the reference point or pi minus the reference point in different quadrants. This will take a little bit of practice, but it will come with time. And you'll, it's the, once you've done that, the algebra is pretty easy. Here we subtract 2 pi from both sides, divide by negative pi over 6, and we get that x is 10. Again, nice, another nice number. So if we want the general term, I will take these two values and I want all the coterminal angles, not just one, I want all of them. But before I can do 2 plus or minus something times n, I need to know what the period of this function is. So period is 2 pi over the b value, and that gives us 12. So now we know, we take our x values, we're going to plus or minus 12 times n, and from that, we get this equation. We do the same for x equals 10, and we've got our two general equations. Let's do one more example. I believe this is the last one. So here's a little bit of a doozy equation. Um, this time we're going to be dealing with degrees, and I want this between 0 and 360, and I want all the solutions for this. It's not going to be, it's not going to be too tricky. We'll just walk through this step by step. First, I need to isolate sine for x minus 15. If I can isolate that sine function, it will be good. So I'll bring that 2.4 onto the other side by adding it, divide by negative 14. So there we go. We've isolated sine. That's the first step we want to do. From here, I want to figure out what is my reference point. So I need to use the positive value. I've got negative 0.5. In order to get my reference point, I need to change that into positive before I take the inverse sign. You've seen this before. Whenever we do the reference angle, you always take the positive value of that. So this is important that you make sure you do that. Otherwise, you won't get the correct answer. So taking the inverse sign of a half, we've got 30 degrees. So 4 times x minus 15 equals 30. Before we go solving this, I need to deal with uh, which quadrant am I in. So because we had sine is negative, just a reminder, sine is your y value. So if I want the negative y values, that's quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. I now need to deal with what does this 4x minus 15 equals 30? How does that look in quadrant 3? How does that look in quadrant 4? So for quadrant 3, it was always 180 plus whatever my reference angle is. So in this case with the reference point, it'll be 180 plus 4 times x minus 15 equals 30. Then let's do some algebra. So minus 180, divide by 4, add 15. I trust by now you should be able to do that multi-step equation. 
we get that x equals negative 22.5. For quadrant 4, it's 360 minus the reference angle, or pull the rotation minus the reference angle. That gives us this equation. Again, do some algebra here, and you get that x equals 97.5. If you're really wanting to figure out and make sure that you can do that, give that a try, pause the video. I'm not going to go through the algebra because that part is the easy part. Okay, so we need to figure out all the angles between 0 and 360. These are just two of them, and you'll notice one of them is already outside the range. So I need to figure out, first of all, what is the period so that I can add and subtract that to get within my range. So if I take 360 over 4, which is the B value in our case here, we get that the period is 90 degrees. So I need to take my X values that I just got and add or subtract 90 as many times as I need to so that I have all the values within 0 and 360. So let's start with the quadrant 3 first and take that negative 22.5 and add 90 degrees. So this will give us 67.5 when we do that. So that's one angle within our range. Let's add 90 again. So 157.5, still in our range. Add 90 again, still in the range. Add 90 again, still in the range. If I were to add 90 onto this, I would now be outside of my 0 to 360 domain. So I can stick with this. Let's move on to quadrant 4. We've got 97.5. So this time I can actually subtract 90 and still be in my domain. So 7.5 is one of the values. 97.5 is a value. Add 90 onto that. I'm within the domain. Add another one. And I'm still in there. If I were to add another 90 degrees, I would then be outside. So these are all the values that are in my domain. So my answer is all 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of these values are valid answers for this equation. Again, if you want to double check, plug in any of these values in for x and see if the left hand side of the equation equals 4.6. That's a great way for you to double check and see if you've gotten the answer correct. So there we go. That is the first part of 5.4. In the next section, we're going to take this material and we're going to apply it to some word problems and some slightly more difficult equations than what you saw here. So please make sure you go through this again if you need to. Work hard on the practice problems because you will build on this into the next section. Okay, so this next movie was actually reminded to me by my wife because she likes this one too. Uh, you might have heard her in the background there. So the next movie that I'm going to summarize very terribly is, well, this movie is all about some ladies who do math and they are pretty good at it. So if you know this one, let me know.